As first, uh, I would like to introduce my, myself and my company. Uh, I work for, for ZEISS, uh, I'm in microscopy division, and I joined ZEISS in 2005, so a lot of years ago, working mainly on confocal microscopy and 3D imaging. So if you, if you have questions uh, later on how to perform an experiment, uh, what are the results, uh, and so on, uh, I'm the right person to, to address. Um, I want to come back a little bit in the, in the past uh, to the Zeiss Foundation when uh, in 1846 uh, a 30 years old uh, mechanica um, opened a, a small shop, a reagent shop for the university and uh, one year later uh, he produced the first uh, low power microscope. At the time, there was uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of chemistry. Um, all, all the people was uh, uh, thinking that uh, science uh, was the solution for everything. So. And um, this kind of microscope uh, uh, was uh, not so performing uh, as expected because uh, every, uh, every single microscope uh, had to be built uh, by two single lenses. Uh, uh, by a procedure of trial and error, and so there are no uh, microscope identical. Two microscopes are different from each other, so, so they uh, have just to put the, uh, the, the lens together and look if the result is, is enough or, or not. Uh, you can imagine for a, a German guy of the time, <laughs> it was absolutely not possible, something like that. So um, uh, he decided to uh, investigate a little bit uh, and he ran an um, uh, employee, a young researcher in the, of the university, a, a young physiker, uh, now the professor Abbe, uh, with a uh, difficult uh, task because uh, um, he had to investigate uh, on, on the law of the optics and uh, he discovered the law that uh, still today we are using. Uh, some years ago, uh, the, the the brand sorry the the, oh, sorry. the brand of uh, the company is a doublet uh, uh, achromatic, so two lens able to correct for the distortion of the lens itself, and uh, <clears throat> with this kind of uh, uh, improvement. Uh, uh, he was able to produce uh, uh, even better uh, years by years. The, um, the professor Abbe uh, comes back to, to Carl Zeiss uh, telling, uh, okay, you have to separate completely the two process. Uh, so you have to produce uh, the lens with, uh, with sand and uh, you have to produce uh, uh, the mechanical part uh, just with, with oil uh, and so on. So by um, cutting out the, the, the material. Of course, uh, uh, oil in, in the lens and sand on the mechanics are something that uh, is not good. And for that reason, he separated the two processes and then at the end put all together. But uh, he had to uh, produce uh, both mechanical and uh, optics and lenses uh, in a very precise way and in a very reproducible way. Uh, so he produced the, also the instrument to uh, measure both mechanical and, and optics uh, results. This is the first microscope uh, and uh, the, the funny thing is that the lens, uh, the, the microscope is this one. Uh, everything else, uh, this is uh, just the, uh, the, the stage, the, the place to put the uh, not, not the slide because the, it was not anymore a slide, but um, then uh, the light source, the sun, and, and so on. <coughs> now it's, of course, uh, very different from the microscope of today. Um, after some years, uh, uh, we was able to produce the first uh, apochromatic objective, so a complete correction for, for uh, from blue to green, uh, yellow, and, and red. Uh, the first uh, fluorescence microscope, uh, even if at the time uh, uh, we didn't know uh, what fluorescence was, was just a no, uh, annoying side effect uh, of uh, the observation. 
And again, here the microscope, this is the camera and this is the, the illuminator, so the source of, of UV. Uh, the first uh, phase contrast movie. And again, the funny thing is that uh, this is the camera, the incubator and the microscope. And of course, in some years, uh, a lot of years after the, the first uh, Italian uh, confocal. Uh, now the microscopes are quite different, uh, so there are no more eyepieces. This is the last three microscopes produced by what size. There are no more uh, uh, eyepieces. Uh, we just use uh, screens or even 3D viewer. And uh, things are, are changed a, a little bit. So now I would like to explore with you uh, how it started and what we uh, what the, 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 just done. So 1872, the theory of images, then uh, the foundation uh, of um, um, the, the inner glass work to produce the, uh, the lenses. Then Abbe, that was a socialist, uh, founded the Carl Zeiss Foundation. And uh, after, the, um, uh, after Carl Zeiss, uh, uh, Abbe makes the foundation the soul of North of Zeiss uh, works. It means uh, that uh, actually uh, we are a foundation and we usually, uh, the 10% of uh, our income, not uh, the revenue, but uh, what uh, we, we, we get, uh, uh, is uh, invested in research, uh, in new microscope, and, and so on. Uh, jumping to the image quality, uh, why we use fluorescence? Uh, my um, professor Bai uh, told you a, a lot of things, so I, I will jump uh, uh, some some parts. Uh, but I want to. Mm, just uh, uh, think a little bit uh, on, on the contrast. So, uh, in, an, in an image, uh, we need uh, uh, details. The first, the very first microscope, uh, the one I show you, was able to work uh, only in Brightfield. So, the, the chemistry, as you know, uh, was a very high development rate at the time, and there are a lot of different dyes of colorants uh, and so on uh, to stain um, the, the sample. This is a typical result, uh, but uh, there is a, a lot of information, too much information. So we, uh, people try to reduce uh, the amount of information using, uh, as an example, the phase contrast, uh, the DIC, uh, the of modulation, uh, the dark field, uh, polarized light, uh, UV light, uh, and, and so on. Uh, the goal is to have uh, the maximum contrast and the fluorescence offer you exactly this, uh, this opportunity because you, you have a completely black field, a dark field completely, and you just have uh, something uh, pumping up in, uh, in light. Uh, of course, as you know, I can have uh, different uh, dyes, so I can have a uh, uh, different uh, structure uh, market uh, with different dyes. And uh, we, uh, we move from this kind of illumination, so the light coming up from the bottom through the objective, through the condenser, sample, objective and eyepiece or camera. We jump to a completely different one. So the light is not coming anymore from, from the bottom, but uh, is uh, coaxial. So is uh, mm, we we use a, a illuminator and the famous filter cube of my of the of Professor Bai. Um, here then we can have camera, eyepiece, detector, or, or so on. Uh, again, on the on the filter tubes, this is uh, the real heart, the real core of, uh, of the fluorescence. Um, 
but uh, in this case uh, uh, we want to work uh, even on, on cells, on live cells. So the better things uh, is to work uh, on an inverted one, so have uh, the, our petri dish on the top and put the objective on the, on the bottom side. In this case uh, we have to pay attention because uh, uh, the, the bottom dish uh, have to be, uh, can be in plastic, but the plastic is very thick and uh, uh, you lose uh, information because uh, you cannot go so close uh, to your sample so your angle will be higher and your resolution uh, will be lower. I will show you uh, why and I explain you why. So the best things here is to use uh, a glass bottom dish uh, uh, very very thin, usually 117 microns, so 0 uh, 0 0.2 millimeters, a little bit less, uh, to get our, uh, um, our cells. Uh, how it works, again, the filter coupe, uh, I know you, you already have an uh, explication from my, uh, from my colleagues. Uh, this is the standard microscope, this is the microscope we have uh, downstairs uh, and usually there is uh, a light source, uh, then uh, there is, uh, so here, there is a, a wheel with some filter cubes and when you change the wheel automatically or manually, you just change the filter cubes. So instead to have uh, a white light, then uh, an uh, excitation filter, then a dichroic, and again back in a emission filter, you just uh, change these three filter. So in this case we have blue and emission in red. I can have, uh, uh, sorry, in green. I can have green and emission in red or red and emission in infrared. Um, if you have the time, uh, check this uh, uh, place. There is a lot of uh, basic microscopy um, articles. It's a little bit dated, but uh, you can find from the single lamp uh, how it works uh, and why a uh, lamp emits lights uh, till uh, the dyes, till the fluorophore, till the, till the uh, confocal, uh, fluorescence, uh, and uh, even super resolution techniques. Um, if we use uh, the, the fluorescence, uh, the big advantage of, of fluorescence is that we use uh, two different wavelengths. So one for uh, uh, excitation and a different one from, from emission. There are very uh, good things uh, is uh, that I don't need to add something uh, external to my, my sample, my, my cells, because I can instruct uh, him by um, genetic to produce uh, the, the light itself, uh, a GFP. Uh, why is so important to have uh, two different wavelengths? Because uh, it is much more flexible. So in a standard microscope, uh, you use a filter cubes. In a confocal, uh, you can change the game and you can uh, select a different wavelength for the excitation and you can select the emission band for the for the mission for the detection so usually on a confocal this is the standard uh, Jablonski um, diagram it is not just uh, a fixed value if you look on a data sheet uh, you usually have here 490 or 488 Please take in mind that uh, every time is uh, a curve. So if you, if you shot here with uh, one milliwatt, or you shot here with uh, two milliwatt, or you shot here with four milliwatt, or here with 10 milliwatt, the emission will be exactly the same. You will get, every time, you will get this kind of emission. So when you choose uh, your, your laser, and you have two different dyes, I, I, I will go uh, much more precisely, but take in mind that uh, if I have two emission, an excitation here will excite both the dyes. 
and I will, I will show you later. So uh, every time you acquire something, there is something noisy in the background. And in, in Confocal, you have a lot of different options to um, enhance the fluorescence. So pay attention to, uh, to the noise and to what is your signal. Um, okay, I have a mission. Usually there is a uh, 20, 30 or 40 nanometers between uh, the excitation and the mission. And this is the stock shift and you already, you already know. Uh, how to work with, with filters? Uh, this is a standard filter set. Filter set can be uh, a bandpass, like this one, or can be a low pass, like this one. Uh, usually, I can have uh, a bandpass for excitation or a laser, just uh, one, one single uh, um, band. And for emission, I can select, uh, and in your microscope, you can have uh, a single bandpass filter, you can have uh, a low pass filter. In this case, you can see you have an emission around uh, green, and you have an emission in, uh, sorry, in cyan, and you have an emission in, uh, in green, in yellow, and in red. So with this kind of filter, you look inside uh, your microscope, and with your eyes that are sensitive to different colors, you can see both the green, the, the yellow, uh, and the red. This is useful if uh, you want to look at uh, your sample. But if, if you have a black and white camera and you want to acquire the image of the camera, or if you have a, a confocal that is working uh, usually with a photomultiplier, so not, not sensitive at all uh, to, to the different wavelengths, uh, this can be a problem. So what we can do is uh, shrink the window to close the window exactly to the band we are interested in. Um, every, as told my, as told uh, Professor Bai, there is uh, for every company uh, a different uh, step reviewer to, to look uh, for the filter or for the, um, for the dye. In this case, uh, uh, the name is uh, Filter Assistant, uh, and it's something like, like that. You can select the, the filter and you get the, the, the kind of, uh, of filter, uh, the band, and you can uh, select also the, the dye you are working with, and you have the, the two lines uh, for, the emission, for the excitation and for the emission. Do it when you work in fluorescence, uh, because uh, if you have two different microscopes and you look uh, something different, uh, 95 uh, or 99% of the case, uh, you have two different filter sets in, in two different microscopes. And you have, of course, different uh, results. Uh, why we use Confocal and why Confocal is so famous uh, and why old people use uh, uh, Confocal instead of standard fluorescence microscope? Uh, I think 80% uh, uh, is for the optical sectioning. So with the confocal, uh, the, um, you have the ability to select just uh, one single plane. You don't have to cut your sample, as uh, usually have to do with a microscope. And you can put uh, a live organism inside your microscope, uh, some cells uh, or some small animals, and you can use uh, a technical uh, technique, uh, uh, named optical section, to reduce uh, the acquisition light uh, to one single plane. This is the power of the confocal, and this is also uh, the, the drawback of a confocal. This is the wide field, and this is the, the confocal. Uh, the excitation would be the same. So I will excite uh, for a double cone from the very up uh, parts to the very lower bottom um, of my sample. It means uh, you bleach your sample completely. 
you bleach uh, the upper part, the mid part, and the lower part. And as you use laser at a very high power, your sample for sure will be not happy. Uh, in wide field, uh, what you have uh, is just uh, an acquisition of all the uh, field of view, both in the upper part, central and lower part. In the confocal, you try to reduce uh, to just a single point. So, if I analyze uh, the different uh, system to work uh, in uh, optical sectioning, uh, I can select uh, three different uh, uh, main techniques. The, remove, uh, the removing of autofocus light, so I acquire everything and then in a different way by mathematically, I remove the unwanted light. This is the, the convolution, this is the structural illumination, and so on. In the confocal, I will try to block the light that is not coming from my focal plane. And usually I will do in a physical way. So I just put a filter, a physical filter that blocks the light. Then there are some other methods, uh, very, very nice, uh, able to uh, avoid uh, to excite uh, the, la the, the sample that is not in the focal plane. This is the, from the excitation point of view, is the best way, but sometimes it's not the best way for your, for your sample. Uh, here we, we just have the multiphoton, or the, the turf, or the lattice illumination, so all the high, very high-end systems. Uh, In the confocal methods, I, we can have the confocal point scanner, the standard confocal, the line scanner, quick confocal, and the spinning disk. Again, the, instead of just one single point, I can acquire in simultaneously a line or a lot of, uh, of different uh, um, points. Uh, how to do that? And why the name is confocal? This is a standard fluorescence uh, diagram. So I have a light source, in this case a laser. I have a dichroic mirror, the famous filter tube uh, before. The sample, so this is a coaxial. So the light is coming from here. Go on the sample, excite the, the light, and then it's coming back. Here there is a dichroic mirror. So the, here I have a lot of uh, reflected light and a very small portion of uh, uh, fluorescence comes here if i put here a standard camera this is a standard microscope instead of the standard camera what we do in the focal in the uh, plane associated with the uh, focal uh, plane so in the cone focal plane i will put uh, a filter. I will put uh, a piece of metal with a hole inside. What happens? Uh, it happens that uh, all the light that is not coming from the focal plane uh, will be greatly reduced by this kind of uh, device. If it is uh, lower or higher, it doesn't matter, but it is uh, greatly reduced by this device. I can control this kind of device because I can open the hole or close uh, the, the hole. If the, the hole is very, very thin, it blocks uh, all the lights. If I enlarge step by step uh, the hole, it will allow to, to pass uh, everything. Uh, and also not on not only upper and lower focal part but even left and right in this way i can control the thickness of the optical sectioning and this is something under your control when i say okay i acquired a, a confocal image 
Truly confocal, it means one area, then I will explain what means uh, one area. And I can control the confocal, the laser power, I can uh, control the, the gain of the PMT, so three uh, leverage. But I acquire just one single point, because I have a, a piece of metal with a hole, so in the complete image I just acquire one single point. So I have to scan on the image, so I have to do in this way. Point by point, line by line, to get the image. Then I can move uh, the stage and acquire a second, a third, a fourth. So at the end I have um, a 3D image, a 3D data uh, information that I can reconstruct in a 3D uh, visor or in a, on the screen. As we are working in fluorescence, the interesting thing is that uh, I have uh, a completely black, a completely dark uh, background. So I can have information just from the focal plane I'm working with. So if I acquire on different planes, what I get from my sample are a lot of different images with different information from every plane. If uh, I compare the two image, it is the wide field with portion out of focus, and in this case I have just one single plane. But I have also the other, so with a software I can reconstruct and get everything in focus. And most important, if you are looking if something is in your nuclei or is over or under your nuclei, you can understand if it's true or not. Um, okay, as I told you, I have a laser, I have a dichroic, and the light is coming back to detection. I told you that uh, the um, confocal is not able to understand the, the wavelength, so it's not able to distinguish between uh, red, blue, and it is not true, because uh, I can uh, insert uh, a dichroic as an example, and put uh, the blue light, the blue light in from one side or the green light from another one, or even better. I can use uh, different uh, techniques uh, that I will show you to select uh, precisely the band. So to say, okay, I'm interested uh, in the green parts uh, starting from 505 till uh, 540, I want to acquire this uh, information. Then I want to acquire on the blue, and then simultaneously I want to acquire also in the red or in the far red. I can do by, by filter, so with a, again a long pass, or I can do it by a bandpass filter, or I can do in a in a different way. Uh, we are working with the uh, very broad emission spectrum, so starting from uh, UV till blue, green, red, and even far red. Now the detection on the confocal can reach uh, even 900 nanometers and we stop usually at uh, 700, most of us, 90% of us stop of uh, 700. 5% can uh, see 740 or something like that, but uh, even uh, more deeper, uh, we need a caveat for uh, <laughs> Professor Bai. <laughs> okay, in... Uh, <coughs> In size, but it's the same for other companies, uh, we have different techniques uh, to uh, separate the wavelength. I can separate the wavelength by um, a, a prism, or uh, I can separate uh, by a graticle, or I can separate uh, mm, by a um, uh, variable filter, but at the end, it's not really important. The, the important things is that I can choose uh, 
which kind of uh, wavelength uh, I will acquire. And at the end, by moving this kind of uh, device, uh, I will have uh, not, not just one image, not just the blue, the green or the red, but I, I can get uh, the blue, the cyan, the yellow, the, sorry, the green, the yellow, the orange, the red and the far red. And I can have a spectrum of the image. And I have the ability to separate uh, two different dyes by looking at how is uh, the, the emission spectrum, even if there is a lot of overlapping. Uh, starting uh, more or less uh, 12 years ago with LSM 700, uh, it's has introduced the um, uh, variable uh, dichroic, so it's just a uh, a glass, a crystal, with a variable coating on the surface. So it's like a many different uh, uh, dichroic filters. It will use it in this case uh, by changing and going uh, in on, on PMT1 and PMT2. I will use this one because uh, it is uh, really understandable to uh, to figure out uh, how a uh, confocal works. But of course, uh, I can have something much more complicated the, the system we have down. Uh, we'll have not just uh, two, but have uh, 34 different uh, detectors, every one for a single piece uh, of uh, spectrum, for a single band of spectrum. At the end, uh, um, we are here again, sorry. Oops. Uh, and we are in here in the confocal uh, methods. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, uh, the optical sectioning can be done even with the convolution, so just the pure software, and also with the multiphoton or... Uh, at the beginning, I told you that it's really, really important uh, to get as close as possible to, the, to your sample. Why? It is uh, really important because uh, uh, the light changes. The light uh, change in quantity and in quality. So if I if I look to a standard sample, a standard glass slide with the cover slip, uh, I can uh, use a 10x, 20x with a distance uh, I don't know one millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters. If it's uh, less than two millimeters, so uh, tw go 20x, uh, 40x, 63 or 100x, uh, you cannot use plastic because the distance between the focal point and the lens, so the, the working distance, is not enough to penetrate in the, uh, the thickness of the plastic. If I enlarge the lens and I go closer to my sample, what happens is that I get uh, much more light uh, but even important, much more important, the quality of light is different. Usually, I will put some oil here in order to, to get for the sample exactly the same uh, material. So, my cover slip, uh, the oil and the frontal lens uh, for the light uh, are exactly the same things. So, your frontal lens uh, is not anymore the objective, but is your cover slip. And closer than the cover slip, you cannot get to your sample because uh, sometimes your sample is growed on your cover slip. So it's directly on your cover, on your sample. Uh, here there is a, a tutorial if you're interested and you can see how the ray, uh, the ray are changing by changing the, the numerical uh, aperture or the refractive index. Uh, this is the law that the Professor Ernst Abbe, he didn't wrote this one, but uh, you can uh, understand from your, uh, your papers, but he directly never wrote it this length. This, this is a law. And D is the distance, uh, so the resolution. The distance between two points uh, is related to the wavelengths and uh, 
to the angle of your uh, objective. So this angle. The bigger is this angle, the more you have resolution. The lower is the smaller it is angle, the less is the resolution. And of course, uh, there is also something related uh, to the wavelengths. If you use a blue light, uh, you have much more resolution, quite to time, than in the red or even in the far red. For that reason, if you use the same dyes in the blue, even if the blue dye are not so efficient, the, as you know, because are usually designed for the, for the um, DNA and the DNA is a lot, but if you mark the, uh, the nuclei with the blue or you mark the nuclei with the, the far red and you compare your image, the one in the red is completely crappy if compared with the, with the blue one. It is not your sample, it's physics. Uh, to go further, I need to introduce uh, uh, something that you maybe know. Uh, I'm a biologist, so for, for me it was impossible to understand uh, until I see something to touch. And for me this was uh, understandable, so I, I think uh, it will be also for you. If I have a small point, non-material point, uh, just uh, uh, geometric points emitting light, so your, your dye on, on your uh, sample, and it passes uh, through a lens uh, or from your eyes, uh, from uh, confocal, from camera, from the best uh, electronic microscope, even uh, electron microscope have these lenses. There, there is uh, an effect, there is a distortion. You have no more points, you just have a, a small cloud with some ring outside. There is nothing you can do to correct it. You have uh, this kind of trouble. What happens uh, if you have uh, two points, uh, your resolution? You have two points that are closer and closer and closer. And what happens if you change the objective? If you look uh, with a 1.4 uh, objective, uh, if you look uh, with, mm, with all objective, so the best one uh, you, you can have on the microscope, you can see two different points well separated. If I change and the numerical aperture goes to 1.2, it will worst. Then 0 0.9 is the best uh, uh, 0. Point, uh, the best 28, the, the best 20 uh, x objective, 0 0.9 numerical aperture, you can see any more two points. This is a, a 20x or a good 10x, and this is a, a 10 or a 5x. So there is nothing to see. Your resolution is dropped out. What happens if I look uh, in the third dimension, in the Z? It is even worse because uh, there is a square here. And so instead of uh, looking uh, for just uh, a small uh, cloud, my cloud is uh, an ellipsis, is uh, something elongated in, in the Z. So in this case, uh, this is uh, about one micron. In confocal, we say 0 0.6. If I go to the, to the best dry objective, we have uh, three to five microns. If you look on your cells uh, and you try to understand with a dry objective if something is in your nuclear or over or under your nuclei, you simply can do it. Because your uh, uh, sensitivity, your, uh, your instrument uh, is just able to have an optical sectioning of 3 micron, so exactly as your cells. Except if you have a, a giant cell spot. Um, 
again this is able to show you how to change the numerical aperture but and coming back on on the confocal uh we started uh, 10 years ago with uh, this kind of, uh, of software where there is a great advantage i will show you uh, so there is a, a smart setup you don't have to calculate everything's position of uh, um, filters and excitation and so on because the system is able to do it to do for you you just select the die and the system offer you a solution but you have to know what happens it's like to drive a car you can uh, now you can enter in some places in uh, in shanghai as an example you enter in the taxi you open the door and you say please uh, go in that position nobody is uh, is driving the taxi will bring you there but uh, you don't know if there is uh, something not uh, uh, inserted in the uh, in the navigation system it can maybe make it the wrong way or something like that if you know and who knows your sample better than you for sure not the, the system you know your your sample much better than the system so this kind of system will give you just uh, the general rule but you have to choose which way you want to, to take do i have to take the highway or it's better if i do the the central market uh, way or maybe it's better if i go on the hill and i come back at the end i will uh, arrive to my home but uh okay more or less every company now uh, implemented something like this one and at the end you just uh, uh click on auto exposure and you get an image will be not the perfect image but you will get an image and then you can uh, move and trick and and so on um okay we are thinking about uh, uh multifluorescence so uh in case of multifluorescence um i have uh, I can have an ideal world. I can have an ideal world where um, I have uh, several different dyes, the nuclei in channel 1, the cytoplasm in channel 2, the Golgi in channel 3, my vesicle in channel 4, and so on. There is also a researcher able to paint uh, on a petri dish uh, with different uh, fluorescent uh, bacteria in ideal world in our world uh, things are much more complicated because uh, this is the excitation spectra of one good dye this is uh, the excitation spectra of another one when uh, i switch on uh, as an example something here <coughs> i will excite both one and the other so at the end uh, I will have uh, one and one two emission, one in the green and one in the in the yellow. And this is something you will have every time on your system. If you have uh, this kind of uh, uh, image where the green is present in the red channel and then in the red channel there is also something more so i have a perfect localization of the green in the red and plus in addition there is something red 99.99.999999999 you have no localization but you simply uh, do something wrong in the system configuration because uh, the tail of your uh, uh, green uh, dyes is uh, yellow and is red. So for sure, you will get uh, this kind of signal. If you switch on uh, the green, you will have signal in the 
yellow, in the green, in the red, and even in the far red. So how to do that? Usually there are two different strategies to work with. The first is uh, separate the two emission, the two excitation uh, from the two emissions. So I will acquire before the green, then switch off one, switch on the red, and acquire the red. Nice, it works, but it's tedious, it's really, really long. Sometimes it's much better to uh, switch every line. So have a green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. On a confocal, you spend some millisecond or some hundred of microseconds. For you, is uh, completely at the same time, but not for a sample. For the sample, are two different acquisitions. It's nice to put in focus, it's nice to acquire, but uh, you have no overlapping. And the results uh, will be completely different. Later I will show you how to, to do that and how to check if... Uh, the idea is simply switch off the laser and see what, what happens. Okay. Um, This is true for confocal pen scanner, for confocal lens scanner, for spinning disc, and even for the multi-channel acquisition or multi-channel band in the standard fluorescence. Uh, some suggestion, we are almost at the end, so um, some suggestion on how to work with, with a confocal. Uh, the sensitivity is really important. I can have uh, two main strategies, three. I can increase the time, and it is uh, usually the best one, but uh, it, it requires a lot of time for the acquisition. Or you can uh, use uh, much more integration or much more amplification. What is the difference? For much more integration, I just uh, use more time to acquire my image. On the single pixel, instead of stay for one microsecond, I extend to two, three, ten, hundred 100 microseconds. Or I can uh, have an average. I acquire uh, 10 different uh, lines and then I average it with uh, itself. Uh, or I can amplify. So I can uh, use a multiplier to add the information for a single uh, photon. In this case, uh, I need more time. In this case, uh, I can use a shorter time, but I increase the noise. Uh, in a standard uh, detection, uh, I can have two different uh, curves for sensitivity. This is the standard uh, uh, sensitivity detection. is very, very low, is uh, around 25%. Or there are the gallium arsenide and phosphate uh, detector, where the sensitivity in the green is quite too time. But not here. If you go in the red and the far red, it is much better to use the standard PMT than the, the gas for PMT. Uh, okay, this is not the case. This is a photomultiplier tube. It's just a valve, the, the old valve of the old uh, uh, TV and, and PC. There is just a window here. Here there is uh, the, the material can be multi-alkali or gallium arsenide and phosphide that convert uh, photons in electrons. Then there is a different of potential from here to here. Usually on the confocal, you can switch from 500 volts to 800, 1000, 1200. The more here the, the voltage difference, the more are accelerated electrons, and the more are hitting the dynodes, creating more and more electrons. 
if you increase the voltage, you increase the number of photons and you increase the noise. So, if possible, keep the this kind of fixed or as low as possible and try to increase uh, the, the laser. But of course, if you increase the laser, you bleach your sample. So, uh, okay, I can switch off. This is the same sample. Here the gain is very high and the laser power is very low. Here the gain is very low and the laser power is very high. The sample is the same. This is uh, the real emission and this is the real noise. Of course, you cannot have this every time this is a signal because sometimes uh, with after a few seconds of this, this power, you lose your sample. So you have to balance. Again, this is uh, much. Uh, can I switch off a little more just for a, a while? Uh, the light, ah, okay, is there. Again, the same sample. This is uh, a trouble in the sample. This is a good density label. And this is a, a over amplification because the signal here is out of fluorescence and have not to be there. So what is the right one? For sure this one, but maybe your sample, you, you are not able to label your sample in this way. And so you have to take this one or something in, in between. Last but not least, uh, the, um, the offset uh, and, and the gain. What is offset and what, what is gain? I will show you later, but uh, if your image uh, is completely blue and completely red, for sure this is uh, under your signal and this is over your signal. So your image uh, is just uh, these few gray parts. For sure, this is wrong. This is maybe correct because you have something uh, in the background that you, you don't need, and there are some small area over sampled, over uh, acquired. This is for sure the gain is too high. Coming back on the on the noise, maybe the offset here is uh, too high. And maybe here is okay because you can see that there is something behind, and here is completely cut it out. Of, of course, if you have a fish or if you have uh, some technique that is uh, just a zero and one, it is much better to have uh, an image like the one of before, so just uh, the dot in the position and nothing else. Okay, I think, uh, yes, this is the last one.